New York Giants on the road at the Minnesota Vikings don't have to worry about weather here because it is in a dome, fortunately. So we at least can just handicap this one. what we think of the two teams on the field. It is sitting anywhere from three and a half to four and a half in favor of the Minnesota Vikings, a total of 47 and a half to 48. Adam, when we take a look here, it is your New York football giants, which by the way, Brian Dayball should win coach of the year. He won't, but the fact that he has kept this band of misfits together to even be competitive in games, much less win games is insane to me. So he should win coach. Of the a pretty year, good but, number. If you believe that right yeah, now, Yeah, but he's not more than 20 to one. Yeah, he ain't, ain't going to win. Unfortunately, um, that said, we are looking at a Minnesota defense that we know can be had by really good offenses. I guess my question to you is, is this, is this a good offense? <laughs> First of all, I do not know why when it's time to talk Vikings, you're coming to me on oh, this I'm podcast. Coming. Don't, don't you worry. No, no, it's coming. the Giants. It's I'm talking to you. Want to talk, to the right. Giants. Okay. I'll just give you the Giants <laughs> side of things yes. and then you two can talk Vikings. Okay. Uh, no, it's not a good offense. Mm -hmm. And, and look, I had fun last week. I really did. I like, I'm, this was the first time in a number of years that I've sat down to watch an Island game for the New York giants. Mm -hmm. I've been really, really excited and gotten to enjoy the giants winning a game, right? It, 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 they did exactly what they needed to do. They created a little bit of havoc on defense. Kayvon Thibodeau started to look like the guy who everybody thought was going to be the number one pick two years ago. And then you had basically Daniel Jones only throwing the ball horizontally, yeah. never throwing the ball vertically and Saquon Barkley doing just a few Saquon Barkley things. So yeah, if you want to look at that side of it with the Giants, I think what the Giants do is against teams that are not elite, they're going to keep it close. They're going to run a conservative kind of game plan that is going to keep the game fairly close. What I worry about with the Giants is on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, I think Justin Jefferson might have 35 catches this week for 944 <laughs> yards. Like, I, I think he, he might just start throwing the ball to himself and catching it all by himself. There's no one on this Giants team who can cover Justin Jefferson. There aren't two guys on this team who can cover Justin Jefferson. Adore Jackson is out again for the Giants, and their best cornerback is playing for the Philadelphia Eagles and James Bradbury. So that would be where I would have a lot of concern about the Giants this week. Steven, uh, this thing was three on Monday, all the way up to four and a half at a few of the books out there right now in favor of the Vikings. So they are, weirdly enough, after a month of getting faded by everybody, um, is, is gaining a, a bunch of bets this week against this Giants team. I think it's probably less to do with the Vikings and more to do with the Giants situation than anything else. But uh, what do you read into what's been going on here from a betting standpoint? Before I get to the on-field handicap, mm -hmm. I just want to make a note about something here. The Vikings were three and a half point favorites against the Colts last week, needed the biggest comeback in NFL history just to win the game. And now they're four and a half point favorites against Brian Dable. Make that make sense to me. Spoiler alert. You can't. It makes no sense. The Giants are still better than the Colts. OK, and they should not be bigger dogs just a week later against the same opponent. Not to mention the Vikings were underdogs to the Lions and got their doors kicked in just two weeks prior. So that's first of all, the, the line is wacky to me, and I've already bet Giants plus four and a half. In terms of the on-field handicap, over the past month, despite two games mixed in there against Dallas and Philadelphia, the Giants offense still ranks slightly ahead of Minnesota in success rate, believe it or not. And the Vikings have turned into a pass funnel offense, which, as you guys mentioned, could actually help them this game. We'll see. But... They can't run the ball. The last four weeks, they're bottom two in rush EPA and success rate, despite having Dalvin Cook. So now on the defensive side of the ball, because I do believe the Giants offense run by Brian Dable against what has been a mediocre defense that I've chronicled over and over again. I won't get into it again this week. I think they'll do enough to move the ball and score some points. What matters is the flip side here. Can the Giants defense do enough to slow down Kirk Cousins? And I think they can. Nobody blitzes more than the Giants, which has led to a top five pressure rate. That also means they play more man coverage on the back end than any team in the league most weeks. Kirk Cousins is much worse against man defense than he is against zone defense. He has the number one completion percentage against zone defense, but only the number 16 completion percentage against man defense. Vikings probably win the game, but betting on them any given week to win by basically a touchdown or more is crazy talk to me. And I'm on the Giants plus four and a half here. 
Yeah, I don't uh, I don't have a strong opinion on this. I mean, here's the thing. Again, I, I, I think that what we come down to is we figured some of these teams out. And I think that the Vikings are one of those teams that we've kind of figured out, right? I mean, there are very few teams in the NFL that you can look at in, in any given dire situation, not feel like they are out of a game. The Bengals being one of those with all the weapons that they have. Of course, the Chiefs, just because of the Patrick Mahomes factor, all the weapons they have. And then listen, on a week in, week out basis, the Vikings have proven they can put up 400 plus yards of offense. I mean, that is, and against anybody, right? I mean, that is, that has been proven week in, week out. They can do that on against any defense in the NFL. And so that would be, that would be my only kind of hesitation here in taking any points with the Giants, because if the, if they do find themselves behind in this game and Adam kind of painted the picture here. I mean, like there's no real receivers to throw to. You're basically only relying on what Saquon can do at this point from an offensive standpoint. I don't know. The comeback factor is really there for this giants team. And I think that against the giants defense, with it being as poor as it is, I do think that there could be a possibility for, you know, the, the, the Vikings to run out to, you know, a pretty big lead in this thing. And I just don't know if the firepower would be there to get any sort of back door. So that's my hesitation in this one. Probably more of a, probably more of a sit back and just kind of see what we're going to get here from both of these squads. Adam, for my standpoint, I can't lose the alt over now. I was happy as you were last week on the win with the giants. I thought it was fantastic. So at this point, Brian Dayball is a guy right. to me. I, listen, I was I was driving back to the house during the Kayvon Thibodeau touchdown. My buddy Ryan Radke was calling it on Westwood one. I yelled in the car and I thought to myself, I can't remember the last time I yelled during a Giants game other than you need to lose to tank. So I, you know, I, I looked at Justin Jefferson prop up. I'm seeing six and a half right now on receptions oh. at like minus 130 guys oh yeah that's your play on this game yeah there is no way justin jefferson short of a rolled ankle is coming yeah. up short of seven catches against the giants no. and they're going to try to get him 2,000 yards too like they're they're, they're going to try to get him 2,000 yards if at all possible over these last three games like they're 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 going to do that 